Fast and efficient software is great. But without control, speed kills. Security provides the guidance systems. It lowers risk, increases reliability. I'm looking for the ones who know about security. The ones who advocate speed with control. These are the security champions. Hey, welcome to the new show, The Security Champions. This is where we travel around the world, anywhere USA, looking for those people who advocate for more secure applications, better controls and software, and development at the speed of the modern IT era that we find ourselves in. I'm Scott Moore, your host. And on this week, we cover DEF CON 2023 in Vegas and sit down with Ryan Black. He's gonna talk to us about what it takes to build a secure culture inside of large IT organizations, how you build it, how you grow a team. He's got some interesting insights I'm sure you're gonna be wanting to see on this episode of The Security Champions. We're in Vegas and we are with Ryan Black. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So Ryan, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and your background and how you got involved in AppSec? Yeah, I'd, I'd say um, I have a non-traditional background in that sense. Um, certainly growing up and getting into uh, technology, I like to pack things, not maliciously, but just curious, sort of see how things are put together and working through that. Um, came in as a system administrator, security administrator, on into uh, static code analysis or those, those tools and teams and uh, other similar workflow, right? Um, and now today, uh, I'm currently a chief information security officer at a, an insurance software company, okay. um, but still remain very technical by design. Awesome. So one of the things that uh, I know that you focus on is how to build a secure SDLC and shifting this whole thing left. And this is something that happens all across the QA and testing world. So we, we're trying to get everything as early as possible with functional testing, performance testing, and security testing has to be in there as well. How easy is it to actually do that compared to some other? Is it the same? Is it the same thing or is it totally different because security is special? Yeah, I'd say that's a great question. Um, the way I look at this is that security, or basically software defects are software defects. Uh, and in this sense, uh, security testing is a, a, a feature or a process of software quality. And so while you have different focus on your QA team for performance testing, how you deploy and monitor software, how you test for security bugs, um, it's very much the same. Different, different tool sets, very much um, similar in importance, and I found that to be mostly, mostly a cultural opportunity to help the uh, development team, to help the QA team, to help the security team all work together to the same goal, that quality software works as intended, whether it's a report that doesn't work as expected, just a, you know, uh, that type of bug fix versus something that could jeopardize data. In your opinion, from what you've seen, are companies really doing this? How many are actually ready to be shifting left? How mature are they as far as an organization? Um, are they are they are we there yet, or we have a long way to go? I'd say that varies, and that's a, that's a great question. Uh, when I when I think of this, I think of it in terms of those things happening in parallel, even fairly effectively. You've got a product security team, traditional appsec team, running their tools, their tests, you know, pre-release, post-release, those types of activities, and then you've got your traditional QA organization, part of engineering or development, doing similar work. Um, I'd, I'd like to merge those together, help enable QA te uh, testers to do their important work that has security ramifications or applications as well, right? Similar uh, types of unit testing that could be applied to help uh, prevent security defects. So really merging those things together, having those teams learn from and teach each other, and be one team, different focus on what they do on Monday, but work together very closely. And in my current organization, that's actually a big focus of ours right now, is marrying those two together so that it's not security bugs being put in JIRA. It's a software defect. The security team will help you groom, work through, and fix. Actually, it's extremely refreshing to hear you talk in terms of this is another defect for software quality. A vulnerability, you can call it that, but it is a software defect at the end of the day. It's a bug, right? And so for you to say, we're, we're hackers, yes, but we're not some special entity that only exists in an ether world, right? We're part of the quality process for functionality, performance, and security. It's all part of the same thing. And you're trying to reach the same goal. Um, so that's great. But there's also this culture aspect of it. So how do you get people on board? I know I have a tough time selling the whole performance thing until they have an outage. 
And then everybody's my friend, right? But security these days is a must have. You cannot make the choice. We, we, we're we okay with getting hacked. We're okay with being on the front of the Wall Street Journal next week. They have to have it. But it's not as simple as walking in there saying, okay, today you're doing this, right? So how do you get people on board and how do you build that culture? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that really starts in different layers from the boardroom, C-suite, on down through your engineering leadership product teams, and then just in the trenches, if you will. Um, I'll start at the bottom and go up, actually. So really, for me, that's uh, with different engineers, having a, a security team that has a development background or developer awareness, empathy is a key word there, know what their Monday or Tuesday looks like, the stressors of getting through a sprint to get product features out, and what it takes to fix things. And what I mean by that is once you have that some credibility and rapport built, you can work together on things. What the litmus test of that success has been in my, uh, my most recent role has been, would someone come to me in Slack and say, hey, can you look at this? You know, they're asking, it's not, they're gonna bring work or say shame on you or that's not good. It's how can you help me solve something? Jump in a Zoom, work together, right? And so that same thing permeates through you know, engineering leadership is saying, you know, of all things, we've got these 10 things to work on. Can we get these three? They're related to the work you're doing. You've got the context and that credibility to say, can we sneak this fix in? So it's, it's about practical risk or pragmatic risk reduction in that regard. And that has to go with you've got a business to run, can't turn all the computers off. But you do want to fix things in a thoughtful way that will reduce risk and be, even if it's an inch one, one week or one sprint and it's a mile the next, you're working together to keep moving right. and keep fixing things. So would you say, would it be fair to say that instead of somebody going, oh, I got to go to Brian, he's going to get in the way of us getting this thing rolled out, it's going to, it's going to mess up there, versus, hey, this is my trusted advisor. I don't want to roll this thing out without talking to him. I want exactly. him to look at this and make sure this is okay. When you've got that type of relationship, you know you've got exactly. the right culture. Exactly. Right. And I think one important piece of that gives you a little bit of a uh, little goodwill there is if you really need to say, look, this must be fixed. Let me, t- let me explain it to you. The first response there is help me understand. Mm-hmm. We've got these things to do, but I'm hearing you. Well, what's, this is a big deal, right? So help me understand. It's not, oh man, you know, this, this, this team or this individual is going to slow my work down. And if you can get to that point where you've got that trust built up, folks sit down, you whiteboard it, or it's a quick Slack conversation, but you know, someone knows how important it is. And it's a lot of, it's some trust you have to build. When somebody believes that this person is trying to make sure that I look good when I get out there in front of clients, they're trying to make me look good. They're not trying to make me look bad by isolating, uh, hey, you did this wrong. It's not that before we wrote, but I'd rather know now than have all of my clients. Isn't that, isn't that true for all software defects, right? A- every bit of it. Pre- prevent them, the shift left paradigm, you've got it in your ID with tooling. You've got training of how developers work through those things different thematic issues or even just functional, how you'd implement something, onto uh, you know, commit-based scanning and different tools you can do there, pull requests, review, um, on up to your QA process, which includes your security team as a partner. And then finally, as you elevate something throughout an environment, anything before it's production, right? Mm-hmm. And so you don't want your clients to see those issues, whether it's a report that doesn't work or you know, a security issue. Let me make a parallel between performance testing. There are things that we can shift left very easily automate and that early feedback is priceless really. And so if we can engineer performance into something so early that the the back end piece of it right before you roll press almost does become a check mark in a good way. Like we've done so much here. But there are things that you cannot shift left and forth. So you still have to look at the bigger picture. You still have to look at an integrated test. Does that match what you deal with in security. You can't put everything over here because if you just shift everything left, the ship kind of topples over this way and you don't have these checks over here. What are the things that people may miss if they just try to put everything over on the left hand? Yeah, I think that's a good point. I mean, you've got certain things like the lack of data sanitization or some of the practices there, right, that you want to catch in your your tooling. You want to educate the developers avoiding that, but things like business logic flaws, unintended functionality, you can say those things are more apt to be caught around actual user acceptance testing or similar, and you want more time for that. So what you can bifurcate and shift left and work on that through tooling process and the prevention of issues in the first place, you have more time to focus on the sand, the polish, and and preventing issues that are more uh, nuanced. So this becomes low-hanging fruit that you can get out of the way so you can focus on the real problems that are really gonna cause damage. And you've got more of that time for the, hey, this, this can't go out, we've gotta work on it versus let's, let's do a, a mitigation here and work on this in our next release, those conversations. And I think the main pressure in between, that can happen between product teams, product development, et cetera, is that everyone's really busy. I mentioned that empathy earlier. It's very important to say, I know what you're dealing with, <laughs> how many things you've got in the sprint. Let's see what we can work in there. Okay, so, so far, most of what we talked about is, I think, easily applied or more, more of an easy play for private companies and smaller companies people who have started off as a DevOps culture and, and those thing, you know, those type of companies. But let's talk about the, 
the bigger companies, the Fortune 500s, the highly regulated companies in financial, healthcare, governments, where there is a need for a lot more rigor in this testing. And how do we determine if these agencies are resilient enough to build out this and be ready overall to apply that rigor uh, to security practices? Yeah, great question. I, I think um, you know, there's a couple layers to that. There, there is uh, more of the control says this, you must use these encryption algorithms or not, or things that have to do with the system boundary. And I'm referring more to, say, FedRAMP or StateRAMP, et cetera, a government a cloud service offering uh, where I've got some experience in. Um, but there's other pieces to it, too. There's the depth of bench for your team, whether it requires cleared persons, and having the organization accustomed to a, uh, a less amount of discretion. So say remediation timelines and so forth. You've got a responsibility to those agencies, a contractual obligation in many cases, to remediate things in a certain time frame um, and be able to report upon certain issues. Um, also things like continuous monitoring that involve uh, the whole spate of things, including uh, you know, those typical SOC responsibilities and so forth. So I think it's just that it, the rigor, as you, as you said, that imposed rigor and saying you know, we, we have to rise and make sure we're doing things right here is an obligation. But being ready and being resilient for that, it brings up a question about the people doing this have to have the right skill sets to do it. And every day I'm hearing we don't have enough cybersecurity experts out there and there's this lack of, there's this need. So how do we fix that? How do we get people ramped up on this so that they can do this? Yeah, I think one important thing is, even in your own organization, to take the time to cross-train, to bring people in, because it is one thing I mentioned, the control mapping and some of that, but there's a bit of subjectivity there. What's the intent of the control, and how do you apply that to your environment? And so bringing in different colleagues from your team to help them level up and learn how, say, the federal PMO, for example, may interpret that and what they're, they're referring to. Anything that may be more black and white or very clear onto more nuanced of what they mean by the control and to make sure you're doing the right thing, first of all, but that you meet the important requirements before you're assessed. Um, or as an ongoing obligation, right? So I, I think um, you know, that would be from your own teams. That would be from uh, continuous education externally. So as security practitioners and professionals or IT professionals, you know, visiting those webinars, reading about the, uh, the different releases from the agencies that are supporting this, so you can understand what they're after and make sure you're meeting the requirements they're setting forth. Okay, we can't end the interview without me asking you the where do we go from here question in the future. And I ask this of everybody. So you're attending Black Hat, you're attending DEF CON, you're seeing where we're at today. Where do you think we are in two to three years from now? Give us a 36 month window into where th things are going. Yeah. I know where I'd like to be. <laughs> um, and, and in that sense, it's the earlier conversation we were having about having those teams work very closely together. You know, however many tools we have or created, there's all sorts of great technology to help us do our jobs. But what I wanna see are the people working more closely together, Dev, QA, product, security. So you don't have this separate uh, separation of concerns there, uh, whether you're all working on putting your issues into JIRA or filling out uh, you know, some compliance things. You're working together. Security is everyone's responsibility. It's a function of quality to deliver services to your clients, whether it be software or, or what your company offers. And the, the teams need to work together. So facilitating that for we're all in this together, here's how we can complement each other and help each other do so. Um, and then use the great tooling we have effectively. Bring them into your vulnerability management tooling. Bring them into your, um, your processes and you to theirs. So emphasize better process first, yeah. then you have the tool. It doesn't matter because the tools are gonna change. The technology is gonna change. The tactics are gonna change. And maybe it's we focus on how to adapt faster to all of this change that's happening. If we can adapt, we can keep up with it. So we can keep up with the bad guys and the good guys are, are keeping them away better. You agree with that? Yeah, it takes all of us. It really yeah. does. I mean, whether you're, irrespective of the size of your organization, security team is often, as is normal, much smaller than your engineering org and so forth, right? So where uh, my opinion is our information security org is there to be a steward of these things, to be a champion of these things, uh, to bring people along, put the metaphorical arm around the shoulder to help pull things forward, but not the sole responsible organization for it. Um, so yeah, to, to your point, it's, it's getting everyone together uh, to influence process, to influence collaboration, uh, and the tools will just help us continue to grow and be efficient in doing so. Well, this has been a great discussion, and we really appreciate you being on the show today. Well, that's today's show. You know, quality software includes functional performance and security testing, and security gives us that risk level tolerance, that comfort zone of rolling out to production. And that's what we need today. And we need to find those people who want to emphasize the SEC and DevSecOps, the security aspect of it. And that's why we have this never ending quest to find those security champions. We'll see you next time. I'm Scott Moore. Bye -bye.